Hello, my name's Robert Unsworth. I'm an engineer working in refrigeration for GEAR. Um, last time we reviewed some thermal processes, it was the poultry industry. Uh, now we're going to have a look at the brewing sector. Uh, I find it again easier to show the process by drawing it out and explaining it, so we'll give that a go now. Yeah, so if we start in the boiler house, a typical boiler has an efficiency of around 80%. Um, that means if we need 5,800 kilowatts of heat, then we would burn 7,250 kilowatts worth of fuel, equivalent to 10 tonnes an hour of steam. Uh, the steam enters uh, the brew house, for example, where we're uh, uh, boiling the beer, boiling the wort. So, um, so we have to be above 100 degrees Celsius in the brew house. Um, but we also distribute the steam throughout the brewery. Um, and throughout the brewery, we have different users. So we have, for example, beer chilling. We have some fermenters. Uh, the fermenting process gives off heat. And therefore, we need to cool that process whilst the uh, beer is fermenting. Uh, the beer after fermentation passes on over to the um, bottling line. Um, there's filtration and different things going on. But in essence, we fill the beer into receptacles, whether that be bottles, kegs, cans, etc. The beer could be already pasteurised at this stage through an inline pasteuriser or post filler in a tunnel pasteuriser. Filling can be done at a very high rate of units per minute and in this case passes through the tunnel pasteuriser. Uh, a tunnel pasteuriser basically pasteurises the product and the receptacle by heating it up. Pasteurisers can be relatively efficient as they have heat recovery sections so that the hot product leaving the pasteuriser preheats the product entering uh, and therefore only the losses need to be considered and a typical efficiency on a pasteuriser would be somewhere around 90%. However, when the line stops for any reason, this equilibrium is lost and both heating and cooling loads jump dramatically. The product is then stacked and typically stored before distribution, so that's the thermal process. Um, but as we're adding heat into the brewery, we need to remove it again. And as I explained during the fermentation process, we're generating heat. So, so we have uh, a cooling system, which is typically a glycol-based system, which we're circulating glycol around at maybe a temperature of minus four degrees Celsius. Um, this pumps around the uh, system, absorbing the heat from the various processes um, and enters the refrigeration system. So if we uh, look at uh, how much energy we might have, if we say we have uh, a cooling capacity of 4,000 kilowatts, um, we enter the refrigeration process with a glycol of minus four degrees Celsius. We add power into the refrigeration compressor to boost this 4,000 kilowatts up to a temperature which can be rejected outside. So, so that would be typically 35 degrees Celsius. To boost 4,000 kilowatts from minus four up to 35 degrees, that would take around about 800 kilowatts worth of electricity. Um, but the 4,000 kilowatts of cooling capacity plus the power that we put into the compressor leave the refrigeration system as heat at 35 degrees. So that needs to be rejected and we use a cooling tower or we use a condenser for rejecting this yeah, 4,800 kilowatts worth of heat. Um, instead of doing that, um, if we add a heat pump onto the process, which in, in essence runs in parallel with the cooling tower, the 4,800 kilowatts, which was at 35 degrees, we boost up to a useful temperature. So in this example, I'm, I'm using 90 degrees. Um, to boost 4,800 kilowatts to 90 degrees, we consume a further 1,000 kilowatts of electricity um, however, we get that back as well. So now we've got 5,800 kilowatts worth of heat at 90 degrees. The 90 degrees enters a hot water buffer tank uh, and then we pump it round to the users. So we would pump it into the pasteurizers, the keg wash, you know, um, CIP sets. Um, and we would only be consuming uh, 1,000 kilowatts of electricity uh, to provide 5,800 kilowatts worth of heat. Um, if we went back to the boiler house scenario where we've produced 
5,800 kilowatts of heat, we've burned 7,250 kilowatts worth of fossil fuel um, uh, to produce the same amount. Um, so therefore we've stopped consuming 7,250 kilowatt worth of fossil fuel um, with a carbon content. And of course, uh, producing 5,000 kilowatts worth of heat by burning 6,250 kilowatts worth of uh, natural gas, for example, has a huge carbon impact. Uh, in fact, it's about 1,400 kilograms per hour, um, as opposed to 1,000 kilowatts worth of electricity, which could be provided by a wind power, for example, and therefore zero carbon. Um, we can help you with these processes. Unfortunately, with refrigeration, uh, you tend to invite us at the end of the party when everybody's left and you've already bought your boiler. But, but in these instances, you might not need a boiler at all, uh, or you might need a much smaller boiler. So, so invite us earlier into the process and we can help you with these uh, yeah, innovative solutions.